Now, something that I am definitely not thankful for is COVID-19. Because <laughs> really, who isn't? I mean, this is the thing that has actually... You know, we, we keep talking year in and year out now about how that, you know, year 21X, whatever, is the worst year ever. You know, it's what we said in 2016. It's what we said in 2017. It's what we said in 2018. It's what we said in 2019. And now it's 2020, and God, did we ever get what we were asking for. So, as much as I am as ready as anybody else for this thing to just go away, you know, it isn't happening just yet. As a matter of fact, we're in the middle of that second wave that everybody is talking about. Well, actually, we might not even be in the middle. You know, the middle might be January. We might just be at the start of that second wave. And, you know, the one thing that I will say about it, and I've said this before, is that I think that it was actually affecting us even worse than the virus itself, is the way that it is making people act, this pandemic. This pandemic is making people absolutely crazy. And so a few months back, there was a story in Calgary about a, uh, a lady that they came to call COVID Karen. And so she was in a fabric land of all places, and she wasn't wearing a mask. And at the time, Calgary had what they called a mask mandate. So it was mandatory to wear a mask in all indoor spaces in the city. As a matter of fact, it still is now. And as a matter of fact, now it's mandatory in many, many, many more places in Alberta. It's mandatory pretty much everywhere in Saskatchewan. This woman was not compliant with it. She was not cooperating. And in my opinion, I think that she's wrong to not comply. I think that she's wrong to not cooperate. But you know, there are other things that can be done in those situations that are also wrong. And one other customer in that store went ahead and did one of those things that I do consider to be also wrong. Walked up to her, got in her face, started taunting her about not wearing a mask, and then took out her cell phone and started to, uh, to film her while she reacted. And then went and put that online and pretty much vilified this woman. And uh, as a matter of fact, it got pretty bad. Apparently people were doxing her at one point and they were calling up her employer and they were trying to get her fired. As a matter of fact, it's possible that she might have actually lost her job. I didn't think to double check that before I started. But you know, just because you agree with mandatory masking does not make you the police. Okay, you are not the mask police you don't have some inherent right to just run around and harass people if they're not complying with these mandates, even if you think that they should. And as a matter of fact, I think that we should. I think that we should comply with them voluntarily. I think at this particular point, you know, probably most places out there, if you're out in public, you would be wise to be wearing a mask, and I do think that you should do so voluntarily. I know that there are going to be a, a few people who might listen to this podcast who are going to hit the ceiling about that but if you look at these infection numbers and you see what they are you know just be smart you know if we just follow some of the guidelines and if we just protect ourselves this thing will be a lot better than it would be otherwise but regardless of whatever side of this you fall on harassing people who don't agree with you isn't the answer and before any of the uh, the anti-mask people think it's like, oh, well, we don't do this kind of thing. You know, we're the ones being harassed. We're not the ones doing the harassing. I, you know, I'm going to stop you right there. That's not true either. So there was a story that came out of Kamloops, B.C. this last week, where there was a uh, there was a woman who runs a, a cafe, a little coffee shop. And a couple of customers came in, and they weren't wearing masks. And they thought that they were entitled to to not wear masks which unfortunately in Canada, well, you might think that this is unfortunate. You might not think so, but really, you know, you, you don't have a constitutional right to not wear a mask in Canada, just like you really don't have one in the United States. And so this woman's in the back with her newborn child, and her husband calls her out because he's out there trying to deal with them, and they're just being a problem. So she comes out and she asks them, hey, gentlemen, you know, could you, could you please put on a mask? It's the law. You know, there's a, there's a, you know, there's a provincial law in B.C. that masks are mandatory everywhere. And apparently one of these guys, he whips out his copy of the, uh, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, a laminated copy. This dude's walking around with a laminated copy of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And then the other guy whips out his cell phone and he starts filming her and they start yelling at her and they start swearing at her while she's still holding her child. Now one thing that this pandemic has done is it's taken actually a pretty 
broad variety of Canadians who never really cared about this kind of thing anymore. And now all of a sudden, you know, all these people, they're all suddenly civil libertarians. This is like the new thing for them. This is like the new fad. You know, I don't want to wear a mask, so I'm a civil liber libertarian now. And, uh, you know, as, as much as this is an unfortunate thing to have to break to you, you know, in Canada, those charter rights, they're not actually guaranteed. There's actually language directly within that charter that basically tells you that, you know, the government can limit this at almost any time for a... For, for, <coughs> you know, there is language in that charter that outright tells you that the government can limit these at any time for any variety of reasons. As a matter of fact, there's something in the charter called the Notwithstanding Clause that basically says, you know, notwithstanding any of these rights, the government can break this law. You know, you might not like it, but the simple fact of the matter is that the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms is effectively self-abrogating. And if you don't believe that, if you don't think that's true, look no further than Quebec and Bill 101, their uh, French language sign law. You know, they actually, they invoked the notwithstanding clause in order to pass that law. As a matter of fact, it's the only time in the entire time that we've had a Charter of Rights and Freedoms in this country since about 1982 that the notwithstanding clause of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms was ever used. And so, hey, you know what? It's been 40 years. Theoretically, we're due. And if you want to keep pushing the issue that much, you know, there's something that could happen. And so, no, I'm sorry to have to be the one to have to break this to you, but no, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms does not automatically exempt you from having to wear a mask. And while there is such a thing as freedom of expression guaranteed in the Charter, it does not guarantee you the right to go stick your goddamn camera phone in somebody's face and just be an obnoxious ass. You know, as unpleasant as everything about this pandemic is, as unpleasant as having to wear the masks is, as unpleasant as the social distancing is, you know, as absolutely miserable as the whole thing is, you know, there is one way for sure that you could make it a lot more miserable, and that is have everybody walking around under the fear that some unhinged lunatic is going to come stick their phone in their face and then try to put a video up on the internet to basically try to ruin their life. You know, there's a way that you can make the pandemic a whole lot more unpleasant than it needs to be. Or, alternatively, we could all just smarten the fuck up and work together to get through this thing until there's a vaccine. You know, and then eventually at some point we're going to be free and clear of it. But you still have to live with everybody around you when this whole thing is done. Which is why another thing that's, uh, you know, the snitch lines. You know, like the snitch lines that they want to have in Ontario and Manitoba. There's a terrible goddamn idea. <laughs> the idea of, uh, you know, the idea of calling your neighbors because they're having some people over for, uh, for Christmas, which is actually coming up in Canada. There's a terrible goddamn idea. You know that you're going to have to live next to those people after the pandemic is over. The pandemic's not going to make them go away. And the end of the pandemic would not make their resentment of you go away. And if you do believe in social order, you know, the one thing that has never ever in human history ever had a positive impact on social order is having people snitch on their neighbors. Now, that's the kind of crap they do in, like, communist Cuba. Now, of all the things out there that all the people who want this pandemic to end don't want to ever have to do... Yeah, you know, believe me this, you don't ever want to have to live like uh, like they do in communist Cuba. You know, there's something that you and the anti-maskers can both agree on. Yeah, you know, I hope. I mean, believe it or not, you have had some small tastes of that over the past few months. I mean, did you like it all the way back in March when you couldn't buy toilet paper? I'm pretty sure that you didn't. Yeah, you know, did you like the little meat shortage that we had? I believe it must have been about in April or May or so. Well, for a couple of weeks there, you couldn't really get your hands on uh, on a whole lot of meat products. Did you like that then? I'll bet you didn't. You know, and one thing that I can guarantee that absolutely nobody likes happening right now is absolutely nobody likes having a bunch of self-righteous idiots running around shoving their cell phone cameras in everybody's faces and harassing the shit out of them. So whether you are pro-mask, whether you are anti-mask, I don't care. The only thing that I'm going to tell you is that if you're doing this kind of shit, stop doing this shit. Because if you try and do it to me, you know, the one thing that I will tell you is I don't care whether or not you want a mask on your face. You will have a problem.